Somebody, here we are, packing for our trip today. And somebody, I don't think, wants us to go. Or, do you want to go sailing? Mew, do you want to go sailing? Do you want to go sailing? Hello, folks. Let us introduce you to our cat, Anna. What's interesting is, is she's a polydactyl. She's a ship's cat. In the age of sail, these cats were perfect because they actually have multiple opposing thumbs for running around the wooden ships to catch rats. Most captains had one of these cats, and this good little kitty hasn't sailed yet, but will be sailing with us when we take off for our live aboard world cruising adventure. But hey, let's move on. Let's start our sail to Mackinac Island. Welcome, new and veteran viewers, to our journey. Join the DeLott family as we embark on an adventure of a lifetime. It's going to take a lot of hard work and some luck to become live aboard world cruisers. But we are willing to sail upwind to our paradise. Join us sailing windward to Eden. Hopefully we can inspire you to do the same, whatever your Eden may be. You like what you're seeing? A good way to support our channel is to drop your anchor on that subscribe button. So first of all, on this about 50 mile or so sail to Mackinac Island, which as you guys know that Parker and I last year did this sail in very, very dense and dangerous fog. This time was a little bit different for a couple different reasons. Number one, we could actually see where we were going, which was an added benefit. And number two, Candace was with us. Now remember guys, the longest sail that she's had so far is about four hours and she's still getting comfortable with sailing. So on this one, we had our EPIRB, as you saw from the last video. We got all packed up, and Candace, Parker, and I took off to Mackinac Island. Now, why were we going out there? Well, the reason is the same as last year. Different sport, though. Instead of soccer, we were going out to watch a volleyball tournament. That's right, our Beaver Island Islanders ladies volleyball was heading out to Mackinac Island to compete against other teams in the region. We thought we'd sail out to see our daughter, Isabella, play in the tournament. So on the way out here, you don't see Isabella with us. She decided to stay back on the island and travel with the team. So Parker, Candace, and I, we set sail. A little bit later than what we wanted to. It's about a nine to 10 hour sail for us to Mackinac Island. And we didn't leave until about noon, one o'clock, which means we knew that we were gonna be sailing into Mackinac Island at night. I wasn't too thrilled about it, but hey, it's another learning experience and we could all use more of those.
But anyway, one thing that happened the same thing as last year, and it seems like the same thing every time I head toward Mackinac, is we started out with no wind. There were some swells going through Lake Michigan, which tells me that there was wind way south of us, but we were windless. We would have been becalmed. So we didn't even bother putting up our sails for the entire trip out there. As you know, we needed to get out there by a certain time. Uh, I didn't want to be out there too late at night. And we also needed to get up early and go to the tournament in the morning. And so we didn't even bother on the way out there putting up our sails. And we just motored the entire way. Now, as you'll, you'll see throughout the, the show, you'll see swells going on like crazy. There was a constant swell up until about two or three miles before the Mackinac Bridge, but just no wind. At least not enough to push us over 1.5 knots. So, yep, we decided to motor. And as you guys know, I hate the motor. I hate running the motor. I hate the sound of that motor. I bought a sailboat, and I want to enjoy sailing because I don't want to listen to that damn motor. I want the peace. I want the quiet. I want to listen to how sailing vessel Ye Moya reacts to the wind and the weather, to the powers of nature. But with that damn motor running, we had to sail all the way out to Mackinac Island without ever putting our sails up. So, guess what, folks? Y'all know I like to do a lot of talking. One of our subscribers actually jokingly just told me I talk a lot, which I do. But you know, I got to thinking, what do I talk about in this video while we're showing images of our great trip? And in this video, it's from leaving Beaver Island and getting to Gray's Reef Lighthouse. That's gonna be the striped lighthouse that you see us passing toward the end of this video. But I was on a Facebook group called YouTube Sailing Channels. Trev, Roger, David, there's a shout out for you. But somebody asked a question, why did you name your channel the name that you did? And you know, Candace and I have often wondered if Windward to Eden is just too much to explain. I mean, granted the sailing on the end, Windward to Eden sailing, well yeah, the sailing part should be pretty self-explanatory, but what about the Windward to Eden part? Where and why did we come up with that? Well, as you guys know, a little over a year ago, we wanted to get into sailing with a goal of becoming live aboard uh, world cruisers. We want to sail around the world a little bit, see exotic locations and be as environmentally friendly as we can to get there. But we got a path. I mean, obviously we're not gonna do it on our Catalina 25, which is what we're sailing now, whose name is SV Yumoya. So we're gonna be having to upgrade. So we couldn't call our channel after our boat like a lot of the sailing channels do because I don't want to rename every boat the same name. It's just a pain in the butt. But the channel needs to survive through multiple boats. And so let's start here. We opened up our channel first knowing that we didn't want to call it our boat. And so we called it Windward to Eden Sailing. Now somebody once told us that we love to swim upstream in a river of rice without question. It's kind of like the old Hercules story. Right before Hercules starts his life, he comes across a fork in the road and there's two women. One's a very beautiful, attractive woman, exotic. And she offers him a nice, calm, beautiful life, raising herds, fishing on beautiful land with not much happening. You know, he'll live most of the days of his life plowing his fields, fishing, and spending time with good friends and good family, with good food and good drink. And there's nothing wrong with that. For a lot of people, that's okay. But some people need adventure. And you gotta remember, the best things in life happen with the hardest course. This is what the story of Hercules teaches us. On the other fork of the road, there was this eh, very plain woman, beautiful but plain. But she was tough. 
didn't have the perfect body. And she was brunt in her talk. And she said, I can't give you this life of luxury. I can't give you this life of, of tranquility. The life that if you spend, the, if you come with me, the life that you will lead will be of hardships. It will be of sacrifice. It will possibly even end in death before you achieve your goals. It'll be crossing mountains in winter storms and crossing rivers during surges, all of which you may not survive and it'll take every ounce of your will to do so. But here's what I can promise you. Instead of tranquility and peace, I can promise you accomplishment and purpose. Sometimes the best places to be in your life takes the hardest work to get there. And so we wanted a nautical term about how we're trying to describe what we're doing. You know, we don't have a lot of money. We can't sit there and sell our house and uproot our lives. It's just, it's just not feasible. So in naming our channel, we wanted to tell people that, hey, we're trying to take the hard way to paradise, that we're not blessed with inheritance and money and privilege and all these other things that many of the other ones are, that we are kind of sacrificing our current state to get to the state of where we want to be. So how do we convey that? How do we put this in nautical terms for our sailing channel? Well, sailing windward is a little bit tougher, right? Than sailing leeward, correct? And Eden is just another representation of paradise. And so in nautical terms, our channel name came out uh, that we can buy new boats and the channel name can stay the same. And that's windward to Eden. We're sailing the hard way to our paradise. Windward to Eden. I mean, it seems like we've always gone the hard way. We've accomplished very much with little. We've never had much. That hasn't stopped us. And it's going to be really hard to get to the point where we can live aboard cruise. You know, full time. And we want to do it as soon as possible. When we pull the trigger to go full time, we need work. We need to finish raising kids. We have to give back. We have to donate our skills to local communities as needed as we go, whether it be the sailing community or the ocean itself. You can't go around being selfish and never giving back. We have skills. We have time while we're out there. Plus, we're going to have to make money while we're out there. You always got to give back, though. And plus, we're trying to show people that 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 just because you don't have the money or you don't have the privilege or you don't have the station that you can work hard and you can push that rock up a mountain and you can get to your paradise that's what we're hoping eventually to inspire with our channel is to inspire other people to work toward toward their paradise whatever that paradise or whatever that Eden may be 